Welcome back. I am so pleased you want to carry on learning about Darwin specimens here at the Natural History Museum. If you're new here, I'm Alison and I'm on a mission to find out more about the brilliant Charles Darwin. I'm off now to meet Neil Adams. He's a curator of fossil mammals here at the museum and he's going to show me a specimen called Toxodon. Now this large extinct mammal proved a puzzle for Darwin when he first came across it. So let's go and find out more. Neil, hi. Very, very excited to, to learn about this, this specimen that you, you brought me. You said you had an interesting specimen. You, you weren't wrong. <laughs> what exactly are we looking at? Hi, Alison. You're very welcome. Um, so this is a skull from our fossil mammal collection. Um, and it was one that Darwin came across in November 1833 while he was on his voyage of the Beagle. And it's something called Toxodon. Now, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this, but if I had to guess at what kind of animal it might be, I'd say maybe a bit like a rhino or a hippo. Am yeah, I far wrong? Well, you're, you're not, <laughs> it's, it's something entirely different. Um, <laughs> but those were the animals that people back in that kind of time were making comparisons with. It's the animals that they knew were big and had skulls of kind of similar shapes. They were making comparisons with rhinos and hippos and that kind of thing. Um, but Toxodon was uh, a member of an entirely different mammal group. Um, so it's something we call the noto ungulates, the southern ungulates that only really lived in South America. Um, so it belonged to that group. Um, so, yeah, rather weird. <laughs> Very weird indeed. And an interesting name as well, Toxodon. What, what does that mean? Yeah, so that actually refers to its teeth. So this is the skull, but actually if you have a look around the skull, you, can, you'd have, you wouldn't be able to find any teeth. Um, so we do have some teeth, so that's some of the remains that we've got over here. Uh, and this is one of them. So this is um, one of the molar teeth, one of the chewing teeth that would have sat inside one of the skulls like this. Um, so toxodon actually refers to the curvature of this tooth. So it literally means bow tooth. So you can see it's kind of got this curve going on with this specimen. So it's named after the, the shape of its teeth. Very appropriate. And, and what were those teeth used for? What, what sort of diet would this animal have yeah, had? Yeah, so that was one of the things, the shape of the teeth, what the teeth were like. Uh, it really stumped Darwin um, and some of the other people that came along later to try and describe this animal. Because uh, like you say, it's got bits of all kinds of creatures. They compared it to rhinos, but also things like dugongs and manatees. And the teeth are actually quite rodent-like. So it had all these weird features of lots of very different mammal groups. Um, but as I was saying, the teeth, they don't have any roots like our teeth. So like in some rodents, they kind of erupt continuously throughout their life, um, which is a way to deal with quite abrasive uh, grasses, plant foods, that kind of thing. So it was definitely a herbivore. Um, and you can see it's got these quite nice cutting edges, sharp edges for slicing up plants. So that's the kind of thing it would have used its teeth for. Really beautiful um, specimen of the, of the tooth there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so exactly how did Darwin get hold of this, this specimen? How did he find it? Yeah, this, so this one's got quite an interesting story. Um, so one of the books we've got here um, from our library here at the museum um, is Darwin's Journal of Researches, which is basically his uh, travel diary from when he was on the voyage of the Beagle. Uh, and on this particular page, we have an entry from, I think it's the 26th of November in 1833, um, when Darwin was, he was off the boat. He was on, on the land in South America. And this was actually recording a day when he was in the Western part of Uruguay. Um, so he would go out and explore along the coast and hunt for fossils like these, among other things. Uh, and on that particular day, he was due to go back to a port in Uruguay to catch up with the boat, hop on the vessel and go on the next stage of the voyage. Um, but on his horse ride back, um, he had bumped into a local and he knew of some bones that had been found in the banks of a local stream, um, thought to be the bones of giants. So Darwin was suitably intrigued, so he of thought course. we have to stop off there uh, on our way back to the port. Um, and this is what he found when he got to this uh, cattle ranch, I think it was, um, propped up on a fence post. Um, so local boys had been using it for target practice <laughs> shortly after it was found. And that's actually why it doesn't have any teeth, this skull. So the, the local boys knocked out its teeth with stones and then was using it as uh, for target practice, unfortunately. Because uh, teeth are very helpful for us as paleontologists to try and figure out what an animal is. Well, sure, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're lucky to have that, that one tooth then, I guess. Yeah, so that's not from the same animal, actually. Oh, okay. um, so this was actually found about 180, 190 miles away from where this skull was found. Um, so, but it does actually perfectly fit into the, some of the sockets in this skull, which is rather amazing. Um, so yes, and he paid a grand total of, I think, 18 pence for it. 
um, which today is a, a little bit more than seven pounds. So you've got quite a bargain. So. Absolute bargain. <laughs> um, we're very lucky that we've got it as well. Absolutely. A lucky yeah. discovery and, and fantastic for, for our collection. For sure, yes. Yeah, it's one of our treasures in the collection now. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, now, I'm told that this specimen has a connection to Richard Owen, who was our uh, first superintendent at, at the museum. That's right, yes. So what's yeah. the story there? Yes, yeah, so all of uh, the fossil mammals that Darwin found on his voyage of the Beagle were sent back to London, to the UK. Um, but they didn't actually come to the British Museum as it was then. Um, they went to the Royal College of Surgeons. Uh, and at the time, there was a, a well-known anatomist and paleontologist called Richard Owen, who later uh, led to the development of the building we're in today in South Kensington. Um, but he was well known for describing um, lots of weird and wonderful fossils, especially fossil mammals. Um, and then he gets presented with all of these new treasures, new to science from South America. He must have loved it. I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got here a copy of Richard Owen's uh, personal copy of his Zoology of the Voyage of the Beagle. So he um, was so impressed by this skull. It's remarkably big, it's remarkably complete, that he puts it front of place, pride of place, in his um, Zoology of the Beagle. And you can see a wonderful uh, natural size reconstruction um, an illustration of the skull the other, the other way up, so you're looking at the underside there. Um, and Richard Owen was able to piece together that we, as well as this skull, we have things like isolated teeth, we've got bits of lower jaw, other bits of incisor teeth as well, and he was able to fit all these pieces of the puzzle together and realised they were, they were all from this one animal. Um, and so he actually gave Toxazon its scientific name. He was the one that named the species, did the first description of it in, I think it was 1837. So getting on for 190, 200 years ago, this was what he was working on. It's incredible, and uh, I'm so glad you, you brought this drawing along as well. It's absolutely it's beautiful, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Really stunning and a, a wonderful part of the story as absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Toxodon, sadly, no longer around. No. Do we know why these animals went extinct? Yeah, so the, the last uh, dated remains of Toxodon are around 11, 12,000 years ago. That's when we think they went extinct. Um, they only ever lived in South America. But at that kind of time in South America, over 60 different species of large mammal go extinct. And it's part of a more worldwide phenomenon known as the megafaunal extinctions. It happened right at the end of the last ice age. Um, so at the time, humans are also arriving on the scene in South America. So it's quite tempting to link the arrival of humans with hunting of these big, enigmatic, mm. probably quite meaty and juicy <laughs> yeah. animals as well. Um, but we don't have direct evidence for hunting of things like Toxodon. There's, we have archaeological sites, but there's no actual evidence of butchery of things like Toxodon. Um, but they were there at the same time, so it's a, a bit, been a bit of a smoking gun. But as I was saying, it's the end of the last ice age when these things go extinct. So we have really rapid changes in the mm. climate, changes in the environment as well. So it may just have been that the, the landscape wasn't suitable for Toxodon anymore. The, the landscape it had evolved in was no longer there. And with humans on the scene as well, that was probably the final thing that tipped them over the edge, as with so many other big South American mammals. Oh, it's such a pity. I would have loved to have seen something like Toxodon in the flesh, yeah. an amazing, amazing <laughs> animal. Um, what can we learn from, from this specimen? Yeah, so specimens like these um, are really critical for answering some big questions in uh, fields of ecology and evolution, particularly, like you're saying, related to extinction, um, given what's going on in the world around us at the moment, um, the biodiversity crisis. If we can actually understand how these animals, right at the end of their um, evolutionary lineages were adapting to different climate changes, how they were dealing with the new pressures in the landscape. That has some lessons for us today in what's going on with animals that are threatened with extinction now. So it's really important for that kind of reason. Incredible. And we've got new technologies that we can use to, to study these specimens as well. That's right. Can we get things like DNA from this? Is this actually a fossil? Yeah, <laughs> so that is a good question. So um, one we get asked quite a lot. Uh, we are the fossil mammal collection, but actually some of the things aren't true fossils. They've not really been fully turned to stone. So these, as I say, are probably at, at the oldest 50,000, at the youngest maybe 10, 11,000 years old. Um, so when they're quite young, <laughs> relatively speaking, they've still got quite a lot of their original organic material. Um, so we can do things like radiocarbon dating to figure out how old the animal was, or how, well, how old it was when it died. So we might know if this was 10,000 years or 50,000 years, we can get that from looking at the, 
organics that are preserved in there. Um, people have tried to sample. I don't think it's this skull, but some of the more fragmentary remains. They've tried to look for DNA in some of these, um, but sometimes it's how they're preserved. So we don't always get really good um, DNA because it degrades so quickly sometimes. Um, but you do get things like proteins preserved and they're a bit more robust to breaking down. Um, and you can look at those and, and look at the proteins that are preserved in other animals and try and figure out how they're related. So some work's been done quite recently looking at the proteins preserved in Toxodon and some other of Charles Darwin's fossil mammals. And they're actually able to show that for the first time that we know that the things that are most closely related to Toxodon today are things like horses, rhinos and tapirs, the odd toed ungulates. And that was work that some of the researchers here at the museum was involved with. So yeah, lots of new, exciting things that very old specimens can uh, tell us about. Absolutely. It's incredible. Thank you so much, Neil, for, for showing well. us this wonderful specimen today. Absolutely fantastic and, and just brilliant to think that our, our ancestors shared the planet with a, a brilliant mega beast like Toxodon. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. But I do have to dash, I'm afraid, because I have someone and something waiting for me in the basement. Enjoy. It's time to head to the final stop on my tour. Well done, if you're still with me. I'm heading now to meet museum scientist John Ablett. He's going to show me a small but distinguished Darwin specimen preserved in a glass jar. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe to the Natural History Museum.